こんにちは。え本日はレース2ゼロウェビナー大学が進める脱炭素ゼロ参加いただきましてありがとうございます。レース2ゼロウェビナー。私は本日の司会進行を務めます。I'm going to serve as the moderator from the、uh, JCI Climate Change Initiative from WWF Japan. Thank you very much. このイニシアティブとその事務局を務めている EAUC、また日本からのレースゼロ,レースゼロキャンペーンの参加を推進している気候変動イニシアティブ JCI。ここが主催して行うものです。このイベントは皆様にとってですね、大学に向ける脱炭素の取り組みの推進、加速、そしてレースゼロの参加、これを後押しする、役に立てるものとなればと思います。レースゼロキャンペーンの参加を推進する、役に立てるものとなればと思います。最後までぜひお越しください。えー、それでは、プログラムの説明から入っていきます。本日のプログラムはこのようになっております。この後、来賓のご挨拶を申し上げます。そして、感想賞からいただきます。その後、プレゼンテーションが5本。今日はレースゼロ、日本から参加,参加するにはどうしたらよいのかというお話。また、大学がレースゼロに参加することの意義について、最初の2本でお話しした後に、残る3本は実際にレースゼロに参加をしている大学から、まあ、そのネットゼロの取り組みをそれぞれご紹介いただくこととしています。でその後、えー、皆様から質問を
for this uh, task force. And I really appreciate for participating in this webinar. Thank you very much. And the, in the uh, next administrations, uh, I'd like to appreciate your understanding and also the support that we have for the in relationship to the support you're providing to the university from our ministry. For the 2050 carbon neutral to be achieved and that we have to work together uh, to achieve uh, now two years ago, uh, Mr. Suga, uh, who was the prime minister then, have made a statement and declaration that we will try to achieve the uh, carbon neutral and by 2050, as you already know. For the carbon neutral, in order to achieve this, not only for the industries, but also we need to uh, have the participation engagement from different entities, uh, not only from the universities. And because it is a wide area, the, we need to utilize all the experiences and knowledge from different sectors of the society. And from the humanities, as well as the science, and the, especially the universities and academia, uh, is a very significant play, a very significant role, because academia uh, strengths can be, should be utilized at full length. For example, semiconductors and the power storage, for example, DX, innovative uh, R&D support, but also universities to be linking with the universities and the coalition uh, program with the universities and also working with the academias for the uh, fundamental basic research uh, cooperation. And for the international cooperation, and we are also still discussing about the international cooperation as well. So this uh, race to zero, uh, for the uh, all over the world, universities as well as the uh, municipal governments uh, are participating in this as well as a coalition uh, initiatives and with the uh, linkage among the academia, industry, and, and also uh, the uh, in industry and also the public as well, public sector as well. I'd like to appreciate your understanding. With that, I'd like to appreciate this webinar and uh, this will be the interdisciplinary uh, active discussion is expected so that we can open the new bright future for the uh, carbon neutral. Thank you very much. That concludes my remarks, thank you. That was Mr. Doishita from Japanese Ministry of, of Science and, and the, also the uh, R&D department. So now, the second guest speaker is from the Ministry of Environment of Japan, from the Global Environmental Bureau, Decarbonization Innovation uh, Research uh, Office. Mr. Kawamura. Thank you very much. I'm from the Environmental Ministry, uh, Global Environmental Bureau, Decarbonization Innovation Research Office. My name is Kawamura. Thank you very much for inviting to this uh, Race to Zero webinar. And in IPCC latest recommendation or report uh, shows that the climate uh, rise should be within 1.5 or 2 degrees in order to do that, we need a substantial reduction all over the world. By 2030, the, that is the real decisive 10 years or decade is often said. Uh, as, as Mr. Deutsche has already mentioned, in the, we are working together with different ministries and to work on this. In each uh, ministries, in environmental ministries, climate change policies that we are formulating in coordination with MEX as well as the, uh, uh, the Japanese Ministry of Economy, for example, METI, and the, of the regional competition and cross-sector carbon neutral technology development demonstration project. We work with the various organizations, R&D and demonstration uh, POC are promoted and the, so that to make the decarbonization model to activate the regions and, and to work on this and also from the Ministry of Environment in Japan. And we are promoting the decarbonization effort in each regional area. For example, decarbonization roadmap, the decarbonization uh, uh, initial uh, area is selected and to try to resolve these problems and to promote the, the in regional effort. So just uh, very recently, just some time ago, the uh, global warming, the, the draft, of the law has uh, has been not been registered yet, but that this new law, uh, the decarbonization effort in the local area 
will be promoted so that the necessary of some financial measures and budget will be provided for those initiatives in, in Japanese regional local effort. So with the there's a very significant role to be played by the R and D Institute in so that the from the private sector working together with private sectors and companies and zero carbon model to be established and also that need to be horizontally deployed as well. In addition to that, that those could be the brain in that region, the carbon neutral human resource should be also uh, trained and for. And also decarbonization uh, activities, discussion should be inactivated uh, among the industry, universities, academia, as well as the public sector. And that uh, I would uh, conclude, like to conclude my remarks. Thank you very much. We would like to start a presentation. The first one is CDP Worldwide Japan. Uh, Mr. Tsukamoto is a speaker. He is discussing the net zero declaration through Race to Zero. Good afternoon, everybody. I am from JCA Secretariat. My name is Tsukamoto. I am from CDEA Japan. So this is the first presentation in the program. Why are we pursuing a net zero in 2050? What is the significance of participation by universities? I would like to focus on that particular subject. So why net zero in 2050? Let me touch upon it rather briefly, which will be followed by the talk of the methodology to participate in race to zero. So two subjects mainly. So this is the Japan Climate Initiative, JCI. This is the name of the organization. Paris Convention is holding the realization of decarbonization and the active effort is made by the local government and businesses, NGO. So the information exchange should be further coordinated and strengthened. At the moment, 697 organizations are participating among them, universities, nine universities are already in. So the university secretary is actually working, w, CDP, WRF, and also the Renewable Energy Institute and other secretariat. So the first question, why should we pursue net zero in 2050? The decarbonization was committed by the whole a globe and also the world. So Paris Convention wasn't adopted and also ratified. We, we remember that and very well, so good. And so the average and the climate and the temperature increase should be limited to 1.5 or less than two degrees centigrade. So in the whole world, the a lot of part of this century, maybe 2050, the human genetic and the human, uh, human oriented uh, activities and uh, should we actually limit uh, the emission uh, to zero, net zero. So 1.5 uh, degrees or less than should be the actual target and actually we are moving into that direction, posting 1.5 instead of two. Uh, so that, that should be limited to 1.5 so that the uh, climate change should be curved. In order to do so, 45% reduction by 2030 and 2050. By that time, emission should be zero. As was mentioned by the guest for this meeting, so we have gotten 10 years, which is actually the milestone age. Not only the companies, but all the actors, including the, the companies and the investors, the local government and all the institutes and should make an orchestrated effort on a continuous basis and for the emission reduction. In this particular context, universities and the colleges and are, of course, participating in this race, race to zero major undertaking under the supervision of UN. Zero race to zero, which is an international initiative, is then making major progress. We are making a quite important movement towards our goal. Let me talk about race to zero. So it is a global campaign. So under the UN, it is actually 
implemented that in each country, the, the official partners are working. They are taking the initiative for the activation of efforts. So race to zero is supported by them. So the race to zero is declared by as many organizations as possible. The number is increasing. In Japan, JCI is serving as a secretariat. So this is a JCI race to zero cycle. So this is actually officially accredited by the secretariat. So race to zero circle is what? So race to zero campaign is an initiative in which the JCI members are participating. So JCI is involved and in this race to zero campaign and the declaration should be made. So let me give you more specifics about this campaign. JCI race to zero circle and the net zero declaration is an issued and also published on the part of universities given this important momentum, sustainable sustainability human resources are to be developed in research and also various activities. Then the scope of research can be expanded on the UN Web page and uh, you can see the list of those companies, the names of the universities. In addition, as JCI, we organize various associated events. And last year, asso associated with COP26, and uh, we actually conducted various uh, events and programs. So you can participate in those uh, programs as well. So participation in Race to Zero. So as a uh, Japanese and official partner, JCI is identified, which is a secretariat. Through that secretariat, you can become the member and the participant. So you can actually use uh, Japanese and uh, for those processes and uh, universities and uh, businesses in Japan and, and can actually utilize uh, this resource. Outside uh, Japan, there are uh, official partners in various parts. EAUC is one of the official partners. So through other official partners, and you can participate in this initiative. So other official partners are mentioned, even through them, you can actually participate. And also simultaneously, you can actually participate and through JCR as well, simultaneously. So let me give you more specifics about Race to Zero and how to participate in this undertaking. The letter of pledge is necessary, which should be filed with JCA. So that is a one necessary process. So other Race to Zero partners are actually another pathway you can use. In the case of the university, Race to Zero for universities and college is one pathway or through JCI. So there are two pathways and open to them and uh, there are particular formats and uh, for pledge and uh, please write uh, fill in uh, that and a uh, format and uh, to be submitted. So let me give you more specifics about another uh, pledge. This is an uh, as a written oath and uh, you can see the date as well as the signature and the basic information about the universities. In addition, scope one, two and three and should be actually identified and you should report about the emission volume in scope one, two, or maybe if you have a three, three as well. And the long-term goals and are concerned with the emission should be actually mentioned as well. And then that there is a file with JCA circle. At that point, then you have become the official participants of JCA circle. Through other partners, you can actually have the filing as well. Race to zero for universities and colleges, and it could be that kind of pathway you can utilize. So through that kind of pathway, you can join, and also at the same time, you can join through JCI as well. In this case, however, race to, race to zero university college and a written pledge and has been already filed. Therefore, whatever has written in there can be translated and used in that kind of format as well. Through JCI, you participate. And I think that is in a very fundamental way you can actually pursue. There are some requirements, JCI minimum requirements have been set forth. So in line with those requirements, your written pledge should be written. 
and the net zero of gold uh, is and to be identified. This is fixed and gold, the net zero by 2050. And the intermediate and the middle time goal is also set forth. And so the reference year is 2010, and the target goal year is 2030. And scope one and two are present, and the scope of emission is an set forth and actually in the total amount 2.5 or more emission per month per year and in the scope of three more than 500 employees or members are belonging to organization in universities and there are many of them with more than 500 members so if the members are more than 500 or more you can actually join scope three and so set forth the goals the definition of net zero uh, is uh, based on SBT, science-based uh, um, target. And so there is a uh, reference and also materials you can refer to. What are scope one, two, and three? The, on the part of the universities, and so that an energy saving law and acts have been in Japan. And so based on that, the calculation has been made and also the report has been made. Some of them have done that and others haven't. So there are variation. So scope one, two, and three are explained here. Due to the time limitation today, however, I will not dwell on them. So could you please have a perusal of this and of these slides. And if you have any question, please come forward to me. I can actually have a consultation with you. Race to zero and the minimum criteria are presented here. So if you agree to the minimum criteria, written pledge and can be presented. Pledge. So the pledge should be made within 12 months after that. What sort of actions and activities are planned? Please explain your plan. And the proceed and follows after planning. So actual actions are to be taken and also the finally publish publication. At least once a year, mid-term and long-term goals and progress and should be actually reported. And also undertakings you have uh, implemented should be actually reported. So please refer to the UNFCCC uh, website and actually the report should be made and through this uh, website. That is a requirement too. So uh, the, the total amount and it can be calculated, which is a very basic and minimum requirement. And the actions are to be taken. And there are many universities who have been taking those and activities which are to be advanced to more ambitious ones. Net zero declaration should be issued, which is actually recognized globally, internationally through adjudicated platform. Given that momentum, there will be furtherance and promotion of those university-oriented activities, which is an our sincere hope. Thank you very much for your attention. And this concludes my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Scamoto. This is the EUAC. This is a second presentation from uh, Ms. Fiona Goodwin. I will talk about the, the Alliance for Sustainability Leadership Initiation and Race uh, to Zero for universities and colleges. Uh, so Fiona, Sam, please. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm delighted to be here as part of this event about Race to Zero for universities and colleges. As you just heard, the Race to Zero for Universities and Colleges is a global campaign to achieve net zero. It is a partnership between the UN Environment, the EAUC, which is the Alliance for Sustainability Leadership in Education and Second Nature. The Race to Zero for Universities and Colleges is the official Race to Zero partner, which is run by UNFCCC. It is a global campaign to rally leadership and support from businesses, cities, regions, investors, and universities and colleges for a healthy, resilient zero carbon recovery that prevents future threats, creates decent jobs, and unlocks inclusive, sustainable growth. All members are committed to the same overarching goal to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 at the very latest. So what are the opportunities for the race to zero? Firstly, your students will need to see that you are taking action in the climate crisis. You need to ensure that your universities are kept competitive and that you attract future students to your university. 
by being taking action to the race to zero, this will make your university very current and relevant to your students. There's also risk mitigation and future proofing your university in the changing environment and climate. You also have impacts nationally. You can impact your local community as well as on a country level in Japan. There's also opportunities internationally to maintain your reputation on the international stage as the Race to Zero features in COP um, meetings with the UN, so this will be featured in November in the COP27 that's being hosted by Egypt. The research that your, in, your universities do is also vital to be part of the solution to come up with ways how we can tackle the climate crisis. There are also some barriers um, in terms of being the race to zero. So, for example, you might have a lack of engagement with students, <coughs> but you can easily get them on board and do co-create co action plans. There may be no senior management support to invest or not understanding what the risks are. So you need to engage your senior management to understand this and to get carbon literate. There may be a lack of action or drive from the local government, but as we've heard from the ministers today, there is great support for this, so that is great to hear. Internationally, maybe education is not seen as a priority on the international stage. However, this is changing, and as we saw at COP26, there is now education is a priority uh, within COP. And there may not be funding available for particular research, but there are lots of opportunities out there. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's have a look at the solutions. Uh, so talk to your students and co-create action plans. You can really get your students engaged and be part of the solution. You can also get carbon literacy for your senior management to raise awareness and to do a business case of not doing that, not taking action. You can work with like-minded organizations in your community, so other universities or colleges, but also other organizations. Internationally, you are committing to a global initiative to so show support and to show a united education sector and look and find the funding that is available. There are also lots of resources to help you in achieving your Race to Zero. On our website, we have lots of case studies, videos, frameworks, toolkits, and webinars. We also have criteria and language interpretation to help you guide your way. We also have the high level climate champions from Egypt and from the UK who are supporting the education sector in this race. So please join us and 1,200 leading universities and colleges around the world and help raise the profile of education at COP27. And you can sign at the Education Race to Zero website. Um, you can, my email is in the chat and you can um, contact me if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. The Paris Convention has been in place and at 1.5 degrees or less and is of our goal and a concerted effort is now being made. And so the universities can make a meaningful contribution in this particular context. Now, there are three more presentations to be given. So the rest to zero is already being implemented by some universities. And so they will discuss and present their participation and their undertaking. The first one is from University of Oxford, the Environmental Sustainability Head, Ms. Harriet Waters is invited. And she will discuss the undertaking of net zero emission in Oxford. Ms. Harriet Waters, please. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to talk today. 
I'm just going to talk to you about how the University of Oxford is um, working on Race to Zero. And that's really a story of how we adopted and developed our environmental sustainability strategy. And it was back in 2019 when uh, our Vice Chancellor announced at her oration that she wasn't sure that the university had been doing enough on sustainability and that we were going to spend our time over the next year developing a more ambitious uh, and a more comprehensive sustainability strategy. Now, why did we need a strategy? I think this kind of information is, is something that people will be familiar with. So the fact that we have outgrown or we are on track to outgrow our planetary boundaries and that we, we need to be doing something about it and taking responsibility for the resources in, that we're using and the impacts that we're having. And perhaps it's not that surprising that there's lots of academic information and interest about sustainability. But I think it's even more telling when the, uh, the World Economic Forum includes biodiversity loss and failure to act on climate as one of the greatest global risks in its 2020 assessment. So you can see there in the top right hand quadrant here with the highest likelihood and the highest impact. So if what our academics had been telling us wasn't enough, uh, also the rest of the world were also telling us that the time to act was now. So we went ahead and developed our strategy using this process. We set up um, a round table directly after our vice chancellor's oration, which included members of the university staff that were interested in sustainability, also senior management, so our pro vice chancellors and, rep and students and representatives of students. And we had a very broad ranging discussion which then produced a working group which worked together to put together a draft of a sustainability strategy. And we followed on through this process, which took us about 18 months until we adopted our strategy in March 2021. That's not to say that we hadn't had any work on sustainability before that point. We already had some existing sustainability targets but around carbon and biodiversity. So it was clear that those two issues were important to us. And we had varying levels of data. So we have really good data on our scope one and scope two carbon emissions. So our direct emissions of carbon. We don't yet have a fantastic, uh, you know, we don't yet have a comparable methodology for our scope three emissions, although it's something that we're very much working on. We have um, uh, put together a whole document about exactly how we are going to account for our carbon. But it was clear from the data that we already had that it was a good idea to focus firstly on our scope one and two emissions and some of our scope three emissions that we knew more about, of which um, we include business travel, and I'll talk about that a bit more later. So after we had put together the kind of scope of the consultation, we went out to consultation on that scope and so we asked the university community what um whether or not the things that we had involved in our scope were the right things to be covering within the strategy and we had an overwhelmingly positive response people were very pleased that we were putting together a more ambitious and comprehensive strategy but they wanted us to act more quickly and so we went away and thought about what the fastest the most accelerated route to zero carbon could be for the university. And after we'd done that work, we came to a conclusion that we needed dual targets. We didn't want a strategy that was solely going to focus on climate and carbon, but we needed to focus on biodiversity as well. And we needed to do this as quickly as we could. And we felt that that date would be 2035. So in order to achieve these two goals of net zero carbon and a net gain in biodiversity by 2035. We also developed what we call our enablers. And that's something that makes 
uh, the strategy work for Oxford. So uh, I think it's quite easy to um, spend a lot of time developing Ox strategies, but not really think about how they're going to be implemented. And so these four enablers are, are key in uh, our implementation process. So the first was all about governance and the previous uh, governance arrangement this really not was really not fit for purpose for a more comprehensive strategy. Um, and the previous governance arrangement would be very good if we had questions about what our building standards might be. But we wanted to have a more comprehensive strategy that really fitted within the grain of Oxford. So we needed to review our governance and come up with something that was uh, that would work better. And we now have an environmental sustainability subcommittee which um, reports into a committee which reports to our council. So it's two steps down from our council, which kind of raises the agenda. We also wanted to make a commitment to reporting. So we now report on our carbon emissions and our biodiversity impact alongside our financial reports, within our financial reports, and we're doing that on an annual basis. And this work was not going to happen without some funding. So um, we have put together the Oxford Sustainability Fund, which is due to start from the 1st of August of this year. Uh, and we've done a lot of financial modelling about how much this work is going to cost. And we've identified four sources of funding for that fund. Um, so some of them are internal sources, uh, including the funding that we already had. So uh, money that was already going into our estates department to spend on sustainability. We're also going to have uh, retain now any money that is saved through utility bills because of the carbon reduction projects that we did, where previously that would have gone back to departments. We are ring fencing some um, student fee funding. So that's going to be uh, two million pounds in the first year. So from August of this year. And then we're also going to introduce a carbon tax on flights. That so that principle has been agreed. Uh, the implementation policy is going through governance at the moment. And that's my next job this today to talk to our committees about uh, how we are doing on that. But we're very hopeful that we'll be able to bring a tax, a carbon tax on flights made on behalf of the university in from the 1st of August of this year. And then the final enabler was about offsetting. And it was soon identified that there was a varying views about offsetting across the university and that we could have spent all of our time just talking about that. So we've decided that we're not going to talk about offsetting until at least 2025 and we're not going to going to actually offset until 2030. Um, and even then it will only be a proportion of our carbon that we offset and we won't comprehensively offset until um, our target date of 2035. So we have our, our two goals, our four enablers and our 10 priorities, which really are what you'd expect to see in a university document about sustainability. So of course, we're going to cover travel and food and waste, but we really need to think about what the impact is that we're having through our research and through our curriculum, how our investments impact on the environment. And then we added in a final one about learning from the pandemic because such a lot changed due to the pandemic. And some of that was quite positive environmental sustainability behavior. And we didn't want to lose those learnings. So this slide just really um, summarizes the whole strategy. It's, it's, we tried to make it as simple as possible so that as many people as possible understood it and could talk about it. And then we also took the strategy and thought about which things, which things that we, we were including in there were things that everybody in the university community could do. So we're focusing on people's paper use, uh, their travel behavior, switching off appliances, all the kinds of things that you would generally see, but really framed around the fact that we now have a strategy and it's a university priority to try and achieve that. And as I mentioned, there are some changes from the pandemic that we really wanted to capture. So we've had a whole new ways of working project within the university 
and we've used that as a, a way to um, reiterate the fact that we would like behaviours to change for a more sustainable way. And so just to finish off with our, ne our next step, so um, we're very much uh, focusing on our carbon tax on flights and setting up our sustainability fund and finishing our carbon management plan, and we're very nearly there. And I think in conclusion, um, the process has taught us that we really need to be thinking about biodiversity every time we think about carbon. And it's quite easy to focus on climate and forget about biodiversity and it needs, uh, it needs a focus. Um, that really, the, the strategy has been incredibly helpful and will help us to safeguard the future and live by our values and protect and enhance our reputation. And that in order to be ambitious and comprehensive and academically led, we really needed evidence base and a very detailed business case in order to uh, ensure that the whole university community were behind the work that we were doing. And I've put my email address in the chat as well. I'm very happy to take any questions via email. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Now, uh, I'd like to move on to the next speaker. From Oxford University is quite ambitious. In her context, I, it seems that the diversity uh, bio, they're also working on biodiversity as well. And they are uh, quite, uh, we are able to hear very motivating, good presentation. Thank you very much. We'd like to move on to the fourth presentation from Japan to participate in uh, Net Zero uh, from uh, the, the principal, uh, the, the dean of the Chiba Commercial University, uh, Dr. Harashina, please. Chiba University of Commerce. My name is Harashina. Uh, from the uh, Chiba University of Commerce. So let me start. From the uh, nat Natural Energy 100% University, uh, we will uh, aim to start the De Decarbonization Society. My name is uh, Har uh, Tachihiko Harashina. As you can see, this is the first R100 University in Japan, R100 University in Japan, responsible for consumption and production of energy. Last June, the, there was a month of environment from the UN headquarters. There were uh, about two weeks for the energy issues. Ministerial meetings were held in, and there are many side events. And one of the side events was that the, uh, from the uh, economic and the society to introduce the activities by the university and representing Japan, uh, we are requested to speak there. And as a, the the as it as it's you can see here, uh, I'm originally from the uh, uh, Professor Emeritus from Tokyo Institute of Technology, and as it, this is the uh, this has been already introduced that the uh, renewable energy has been adopted uh, much more in the university today, and the uh, race to zero campaign. The 1,118 universities have participated, and more than 10.76 million students in Japan. The Chiba uh, University of Commerce, as well as the uh, the University of Tokyo, only two universities from Japan. And now today, uh, it is about seven universities, and the uh, less uh, on climate emergency declaration as well. But the, there's still uh, the Natural Energy University League was established in 2021 June, and that was the we are prepared in 2019. After achieving 100% of that its goal, we decided to talk to other universities, other presidents of the different universities, and also with the help of the coalition uh, to achieve the carbon neutral achievement to contribute from the uh, university coalition with the help from the ministries. Let me introduce the university first, my university first, in, in Chiba, in prefecture, Ichika City, Kofudai, that is the next to the Tokyo, uh, in Tokyo, and this is six thousand five hundred university students and seven sixty faculty members. It is not the, that big university. However, we have five 
departments and graduate school and research institute. We have the about uh, Ichikawa campus. We have satellite campus in Maranouchi, Tokyo. Uh, we also have the Noda Mega Solar Power Generation Plant. As you can see on the left hand side bottom, in Ichikawa campus, on the campus of the university, we have the uh, solar panel uh, installed, as you can see in the picture on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, various activities are made by our students. Then why we are working on the natural energy that is because are uh, based on our spirits and principles of our starting our university established in 1928 a uh, commercial uh moral or in commercialism as well as in the actual practical studies to do uh, uh because the and that is the uh, buyer and seller and also the society good so that so that the that is the from the uh original japanese and that is the, I use the Japanese word of the uh, Dao. That is the leader, uh, Dao leader, uh, who look at the, uh, from the uh, big picture uh, to look at the change of the society and in that era and times, and to try to provide solution to various issues in society to have the high ethical concepts and such a leader. With the, Mr. Inazo Nitobe, who uh, talked about the samurai Dao. And that's been the, especially for the past three, and the courage and the moral, as well as the uh, justice. And those are the three uh, elements of the uh, samurai Dao. And that is a concept that we, uh, with the uh, help of the mindset of Jin, where no one left behind uh, in the effort to uh, the goals of the SDGs. So, in the, uh, that is really matches with our uh, ideas of our uh, spirit of building our uh, universities. We are quite abundant in natural energy in Japan. However, because the policy was delayed, we have not been able to make a shifting from the large scale power generation. So we need to make a paradigm shift. However, due to COVID-19 and also the uh, globalization, the local uh, region distributed um, energy society that we need to transform into, that is possible today. The large scale power generation, this paradigm shift, I need to take place and it's been because each uh, entity is has a responsibility to have make their own renewable energy power generations then we can have more power generation than the actual consumption volume of the power so that we can distribute that by the use of our commerce and that is the our idea the cg12 that is responsible consumption and production of the energy and that we like to uh, promote that and the we my university need to show the specific example the first we need to start uh, from our spirit and the chunk which is from natural energy 100 percent university what do we mean by that natural energy 100 percent university because energy issue is raised to the various SDG diversified goals and that's the three significance that we work at the university to engage in that. The first one is to have to show that to the other public organization and NGOs. The second one is the help uh, in the human resource training in terms of the students training and to nurture the human resource for that. And also number three is really, it is a regional local activity to help and promote that such a so that we want to show the model from our university and that we want to continue this effort. Therefore, we have made the University League of Natural Energy, RE100 RE University to towards decarbonization and to expand our activities. And that is what we've been trying to do. And in 2017, That is what we have today. I have the Natural Energy 100% Universities and 2017. And that is the, what the, uh, we have achieved. 
is the uh, the 19 uh, to re renewable energy 100%. And also uh, in 2019 August, uh, we have achieved the 100% uh, power generation from the uh, renewable energy, not only from uh, pow uh, pow power uh, solar power generation, but also from the uh, combination of the three. One is the lighting to become LED, which is more power efficiency, and also creating energy by the solar power generations, and also power shift. We purchase the uh, renewable energy from the power companies. And so that the our decision making, that the key point is the decision making of the organizations and also uh, more voluntary works and activities by the students as well. And that is the, what the university can do. In 2013, in Maranouchi, the in our satellite campus in Maranouchi, Tokyo, that is in the uh, near the actually the emperor's uh, residence. Uh, we have start we started the some of the voluntary activities uh, to think about the some of the classes on um, to think of the sustainable and en environmental energy policy, and then we have conducted this every year. To and this was a voluntary effort that we wanted to do that, and then local uh, faculties and students, uh, educational footprint is quite large, but 100% achievement, then the investment is needed so that the, that is lead to the uh, decision-making of the organizations and the uh, agreement uh, within the university is very important. And also we have the policy information department of study, and then also received the about 10 million yen uh, funding from the Japanese METI, Ministry of Economy and Trade and Industry. And so, so we, we have done the every year of the uh, large game plan uh, to, to do the uh, water showering uh, for to make those efforts. And then from the other present project of the university, to, to make the decoration as a university from the Chiba University of Commerce so that the environmental target goal uh, decoration was done in November uh, 20, 2017. As we made this declaration to the first out 100 universities, many media uh, people have actually gathered at the press, our press conference in 2017 and it was more than, uh, featured in more than 111 medias. Uh, and then uh, in FI 2018, to, uh, we have set our environmental goals to make our university the first in Japan out 100 universities. And then scope one, scope two, that we have worked on. And today, however, there has been somewhat reduced the consumption uh, due to COVID-19. So in we have made our goals target to be achieved in 2023 to be based on the 100% university based on natural energy for the first time in Japan. And the, the key point is the decision making of the organizations and the actual action has been already started such as the to change our lighting in a building to LED and introduce energy management system. And we have received some of the awards from the ministry and I, let me skip some of the points because of the time constraint, but then make this uh, environmental emergency declaration was made as well. And race, then we also joined uh, race to zero. Have, uh, we have participated in 2020, uh, February, that was the first in the, as a Japanese university to join the race to zero. For the actual specific functions, such as the uh, lighting of LEDs, and in, to introduce EMS, environmental management system, to visualize the energy in the system. As the, without spending too much burden, we have made this uh, a commercial entity and to use it as in terms of these spaces, then, then we are able to reduce our expenses, expenditures on the university side to reduce to the like a 10 million in level. 
And this is the uh, our uh, solar panels uh, have been installed to make this. Uh, it will pay off uh, because the Tokyo TEPCO Tokyo Electric Power Corporation will purchase power from us, and that helps as well. That is the uh, uh, power uh, procurement uh, using the latest uh, public uh, the power uh, procurement and using the only the renewable energy. And also we have made uh, some of the uh, hardware and softwares has been also utilized for this. And also we are making the hardware for this, such as uh, we have made uh, these classes on the uh, Japan's first natural energy 100% university to be made and various activities. Those uh, overseas students who were in our summer school also participate in various activities that we do as a university. So these are the initiatives by the students. And as a result of that, last June, we have started the University League last year in June. As I was, I used this in our keynote speaker a speech. Our president and as well as the other people from different universities have joined this league and Renewable Energy University League of Japan. And then there are about 10 universities, but actually it is increasing. We have today 19 universities joined this our Renewable Energy University League of Japan. And other universities also wanted to participate in this as well. So, so I hope that you will also be able to see us. And also well, persisting in race to zero participation is also then they have also considering that as well. So that we can share the experiences and with them in doing so. So the information disclosure is very important and significant. Uh, we make this report, integral report on this, and also, and then we now uh, publish the English version as well, uh, Chiba University of Commerce, so that the uh, we introduce uh, that will conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Harashina, and for the, you have spent a lot of time uh, to, to do some of the activities uh, for a long time. And now, as a university, I think you have made this effort. That is quite impressive, especially the key, key point is, as you mentioned, is the decision-making body, and that you make such uh, initiative from the decision-making body to set the goal clearly, and then actually actualize that like a base to zero, what you have promised, and you had been doing that uh, from the old days, well, many, some years already. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to next presentation. There is another presentation uh, from Japan, Japanese University. Tokyo University joined the, the race to zero. Uh, Vice President Dr. Okubo Tatsuya is invited, and also Dr. Kikuchi Yasunori from uh, Tokyo University, uh, the Institute for Future Initiatives, uh, are speakers. Thank you for your present introduction. My name is Okubo. I am Vice President of Tokyo University, and uh, I am engaged in the GEX and the promotion and its initiative. I would like to show you the first and the slide. In April last year, there was an important uh, initiative launched, and, and uh, actually, and, uh, Dr. Fuji became the president, and in autumn, uh, the U Tokyo Compass was announced, which is actually the foundation of the direction, and the major pillar is a GX and a promotion. The next one, please. Greece transformation is uh, to be advanced and uh, as uh, the implementation of act activities and uh, international GX should be actually promoted and uh, human resource development and also uh, the uh, collaboration with local community and also the industry. So given uh, those uh, major pillars, we are now engaged in activities. In uh, this uh, uh, GX and uh, race to zero is now being uh, implemented. 
last year in November when a COP26 was convened in the UK, our members also participated in the program. On that spot, the race to zero joining was declared. We announced our joining. So the process to that point and also the initiatives that we are committed to are explained by Dr. Kikuchi. He is from the Institute for Future Initiatives. Thank you. My name is Sana Kikuchi. I am from the Institute for Future Initiatives. I would like to give you more specifics about Race to Zero and our commitment. As mentioned already, on our part and in our initiative, and covering scope one and two and three, so the gas and the greenhouse and the gas and the emission is actually identified and from what activities and research and they initiated and also generated. We would like to identify the sources as well. As you understand, the calculation method then has got various arguments and also the discussions. And so with regard to the calculation method, there has been evolution and changes, and we would like to show the process of evolution so that you can see the total landscape of our initiative. Not only the visualization, but also the policy and so countermeasure to be set forth are very important. We are engaged in the education and the research, and so we should not jeopardize the impact and the benefit of the research and also education. How can we actually connect the, the, uh, our initiative and the to education and the research? But, we are located in the city center of Tokyo with a high population density. So it is an urban university. And therefore, in this context, and how can we implement a carbon neutral and achieve it? So we should have a proper planning. As a university like and actions are to be very important. Therefore, the resources and energy related countermeasures are to be implemented, including the renewable energies. And of course, and as mentioned already by uh, other speakers, and we are committed to that too. Inside the research activities, and, uh, now we have been involved in the demonstration study, and we have been uh, doing a lot of research, including recycle and so policy making as well. The local community actions can be actually supported, and we are joining and, and making joint effort with the local committee so that the uh, policy can be formulated. On the part of the universities, they can make contribution and the education itself can make contribution. So they are very important part and the roles we can play. So the greenhouse and the gas and the emission should be reduced and we are actually targeting at that achievement and while making effort, how can we actually make contribution? The pandemic has mentioned actually the online communication has been also disseminated in various parts of society, including our way of life. And then in this zero to uh, race to zero, uh, we might encounter various changes after pandemic. What sort of changes are we going to encounter? We need to look at them too. Universities, uh, students, and also the staff members and have to change the mindset as well as the behaviors. And so we needed to change their behaviors. And also in the total society, uh, we needed to actually promote that uh, emission and the GHG emission reduction. Inside university, what we are doing should be visualized and from outside. And so that what impact and the benefit that we can generate and should be fully understood. So GHG emission reduction has gotten a major direction and also principal idea. And so we need to give the first and the priority to our own reduction. Of course, the renewable energy is consulted about, but then offsetting also should be done. But then before talking about them, we have to reduce what we generate and change the emission from our sources. So that, that is the most important priority and also the, the fundamental um, policy. It is, have been actually started in uh, our university, Tokyo Sustainable Campus project, and it was launched in, two, launched in 2008. 
And uh, the energy saving equipment has been facilitated and the student members are now engaged in various actions, including recycling and energy saving, and also uh, the awareness and uh, in, uh, recognition improvement activities. In November last year, when COP26 was actually held in Glasgow, we were involved in that and we connected in Glasgow to Japan and the various students and actually participated in that web seminar. And also we have launched a new courses and a curricula so that an increasing number of students can be engaged in Race to Zero. So we are very, very keen on expanding the scope of activities covering a new pathways as well. So we have just started uh, this uh, undertaking. This is the final slide. So to the achievement of Race to Zero, on 2008, we had done some important milestone year. And last year, for uh, while strengthening our current achievement, uh, we would like to further promote it. And uh, so for the 12 months, and. Uh, as it was placed and a scope one, two, three oriented and the emission wasn't calculated. We are right in the midst of that calculation. It has been almost a finalization, but then it was the end. Maybe it was an autumn season this year. We can announce it and publish it. And so hot spots are to be identified. So big kind of GHG emission source. And so by uh, identifying and also ranking those hot spots and we can prioritize our actions. And so short term, mid term, and also long term pledges and that should be actually translated into action uh, plan. And so we would like to have a zero carbon achievement and a through education and research. So that's all from me. I deeply appreciate your attention. Thank you. Dr. Okuba, Dr. Kikuchi, thank you for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. He talked about the scope one, two, three, and that is the uh, will be discussed in terms of scope three, the how the university scope three will be calculated. Uh, is quite a challenging and difficult issue, as I've heard before. And that is the how the University of Tokyo, including University of Tokyo, uh, the best uh, activities are made, uh, including the uh, COP. Uh, the best. And that is a very good information for other universities as well. And the, I'd like to, I really appreciate your effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we have about 20 minutes or so, so we'd like to move on to the uh, Q&A session uh, for the remaining time. But the, in the Q&A box, there's no uh, question at this point of time. So the, we'd like to show you, the, this is the uh, method is displayed on the screen uh, when you pose a question and the Q&A box. But the, there are some additional information that I like to move, provide that in the chat from Fiona San, uh, Race to Zero University for College, University and College website URL has been provided from Fiona San and also from Hario San's email address is also shown. So please uh, refer to the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll share that. Uh, I will share that in the chat section. So if you want to exchange directly with those speakers, uh, please feel free to contact them. Now uh, that I have just posted in the chat section, thank you. Now, are there any questions or anything that perhaps you haven't understood? Or oh, I'd like to invite any question. And by the way, uh, for the university, for decarbonization, for the people who are uh, worked on the decarbonization effort. So this is uh, uh, this is the uh, unofficial event, so you, you can feel relaxed in your discussion. Thank you. And also in the presentation, if you have any uh, question to the other speakers or out from other universities, you can. Uh, Turn uh, the panelists can also ask questions as well. That the, the speaker can also ask questions as well. So why do I wait for that? 
let me uh, pose a question from my side, my end. Uh, Mr. Harashina, I think you open. Do you have any question, Mr. Harashina? Well, since it, I didn't show you some specific numbers because of the time constraint, but in my case, but the, the reason for that, we, we have achieved this. In 2013, we have done the open campus uh, course in 2013 in Marunouchi. We have made our experiences in 2000. In the, uh, we have made information uh, department as a part of the activity in Chiba Prefecture. Uh, we have made, received the situation by ISO 14001 for the first time in Chiba Prefecture. From, uh, from my university and 2003. So we have made those various activities on the environmental issues in the past, but I came to this university uh, from Tokyo Institute of Technology in 2012. So about 10 years ago to move to this university. But I think the culture is very important as in the University of Tokyo, they have made various activities and the environmental issues. So that the culture uh, of university is very important and the things many can happen. So in each university, I'm sure that each university can work on that. And then uh, I'd like to appreciate, I think that we move on to the good directions. The other part, so maybe the uh, Samurai Dao, the once we say we would make, keep a promise, that's, that's the good spirit of Samurai in Japan spirit. And once we say that, then we make a statement, not only make the declaration, but we actually make an action is very important. So, and since that, uh, so please uh, make a declaration and the, and also the, for those that, those are the, the people who I, we're talking to, I'm talking to the presidents of different universities and, but other organizations and the, and that is the, so the, uh, as the individuals, such as the president of the university also joined that, our effort. And by doing that, uh, really changed the university itself. And that's very important, I think. So in that time mindset, and, and that is the website, uh, that the, uh, also the, the, we have various membership now. Thank you very much. Thank you for the, uh, from three universities, first, uh, that is the race to zero and the, and that is the, and for that, thank you very much. So, so now, uh, now. There is one question. So the uh, natural energy 100% universities to be achieved and that requires a lot of effort investment in your university. The president isn't actually giving the, uh, the energy and also support. Otherwise, then actually there is an increment in the resource and energy and whatever. So how do you deal with that? And, uh, Mr. Harashina, Dr. Harashina, what do you think? It is a very important uh, issue. So, so the size is important, and in our case, it is in a small size or medium size, therefore rather easy to handle. So I used to be working at the Tokyo University Institute of Technology, and they use an enormous amount of energy, Tokyo University too. Therefore, the financial impact is so, so different. So you can start your know, commitment and from something small and nearby. But then even so, you need to have a, some uh, investment we purchased an LED and a 25% reduction of electric, electric power was achieved. And so 400 million yen uh, was uh, made available. And so uh, actual, actually, in so we actually established an incorporation and then and, uh, the university led an uh, incorporation and that uh, worked uh, for the fundraising. So 
I am actually the CEO of that company. And then LED was purchased by that incorporation business. And then a niece was made to the university. So on a lease basis, the university is using that facility, LED lighting. So that was actually accepted when we proposed that. That is in a quite positive direction. And in the local community, there are various conditions. But I believe that the funding is actually probably smoothly conducted so because we had the trust from local community, we were deep rooted in local community. That was a really important support for us. And thank you very much Anna, for your answer. With regard to the financial uh, cost, Anna, I think there is a lot of interest Anna, uh, in Tokyo University, Oxford University. And uh, do you have anything that you can mention about the budget and also funding? Do you have any advice about the budget to be formulated? How do you think? Could you please uh, uh, answer that? And, uh, Dr. Kikuchi, Dr. Okubo, and uh, Ms. And Waters, and, uh, do you have any answer about this question of the investment and the cost? So as we continued uh, in the TSCP activities from 2012, that the from each university that we are using the our expenses was a several percentage were uh, has been uh, increased so that we distributing our budget to do various uh, energy issues to work on energy issues. And through these activities in my universities, and also in R and D efforts uh, in research activities, uh, we have done our uh, sustainability uh, research uh, in my universities. As as he has already mentioned, because of such a history uh, in the University of Tokyo, uh, that is we we are really uh, working on that. Thank you very much. That was uh, Mr. Dr. Okubo from University of Tokyo. And now, uh, this is very important to make some question. How about Haria san in terms of the budget uh, issues? Are there anything that you'd like to mention? Thank you. I think it's a very good question because without a doubt, this is going to cost quite a lot of money. So there needs to be a focus on budget. What we did was um, we used uh, information that we'd gathered already from the um, carbon reduction projects that we had implemented. So we had some evidence about how much this was going to cost us, and then we scaled it up for what we needed to achieve by 2035. And then we had that financial modelling independently verified so that um, there was a bit more confidence from the university that we were basing our plans on a robust budgeting methodology. So once we had an idea of what the actual envelope was going to be, which at the time that we did the work was about 200 million pounds, we could then think about how we would find the funding for that. And that we then went on to work on these four different funding streams, which I talked about in my presentation. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much Anna, for your answer. So Anna, in uh, different universities, there are different methods which uh, we can learn from. I think the next question then, with regard to uh, scope three, there is a question. In university, you have the scope three calculation. To what extent Anna, uh, should we do that? And actually that Anna, the food loss and also waste Anna, handling and all those things are covered. So Mr. Fiona, so you joined the race to zero. So scope three is an actual actually calculated and addressed by university. In what way should the university address the scope three? Thank you, good question. Um, scope three is always a difficult area, um, but the race to zero criteria does include scope three. So all universities do have to include that. It's got a, um, in the interpretation and criteria guidance, there's further information about that and you can find that on our website. Um, it does include um, 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 procurement spend, business travel, and um, in terms of materiality, it is for the institution to calculate any other areas that would be included and that would be a significant impact. So, for example, international student travel, um, 
and um, staff travel um, for research purposes as well. Um, but in the um, criteria guide, there's more detailed information uh, about that to, to support universities in calculating their scope three. And thank you very much for your answer. On the website, that information is posted, so we can actually refer to that and we can learn from that a lot. Thank you for your answer very much. So now, uh, this is Hashan speaking, uh, that the, so that the, in race to participate in race to zero, the many universities who participate in race to zero, their scope one, scope two are mentioned, and that has been already public information. So first, achieving scope one, scope two is very important because scope three is quite challenging and difficult. So the first, like the uh, emission mosaic and so on, that uh, scope two is quite challenging area and it is quite challenging and enjoyable. And that is a, has got a sense of spirit of the challenges. And that is the uh, University of Tokyo I also working on that. I'm really looking forward to that. So the exchange among different universities is very important. So, but first, it's important, to, I think, to achieve uh, scope one and scope two, because to, to work on scope three from the beginning is quite challenging and difficult. So in the race to zero initiatives, so first I uh, uh, work on the scope one and two is my recommendation. Thank you very much. Sion Sans, are there any additional comment? Please, and, and go ahead. Hi, uh, it, just, 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 sorry. Um, in the race to zero, zero, you have um, you can set two targets. So you can have an interim target, uh, which can include your scope one and your scope two, um, and then you can have a longer term target, uh, which would then include scope three. So very much uh, taking your point in terms that you can you can tackle scope one and two initially, and then uh, can move on to scope three. So that the race to zero um, factors that in to help. So scope one and scope one, two, and then I can uh, start also with the work on scope three eventually. Thank you very much. So there are still two remaining questions. Gamma ray uh, electric power was actually my application for patent. And so the used energy is used for the energy source. And so that there are pros and cons, and some are pro and some are against. And so the, actually the nuclear power uh, is an actually regarded in what way globally. So I would like to see the global trend. And so actually distancing and also on the anti-nuclear power is an actually some movement and rather than race to zero, maybe how to use a nuclear power station is different from one country to another. Policies are different. And so in 2011, we had an actually big accident. Therefore, when it comes to nuclear power station, the consensus in the Japanese citizens is rather hard to achieve. The race to zero has gotten the global communication so it is not touching upon that and elimination of a nuclear power station. It depends on the government. And so and the, and the nuclear power and, and the renewable energy should be promoted, but it includes the distancing of the nuclear power. So that is the, the government and the policy. So and the renewable, renewable energy as a key factor, and we need to promote the natural the natural resources and for the power generation. I believe that is a positive direction into the future. So if there is any additional comment you would like to present, please. So when it comes to the nuclear power station, I believe I believe that it is very useful. I was being believe that, but the final processing is always a remaining matter. The total cost is enormous when thinking about the final processing. And so, of course, fuel roads are rather cheap, but when thinking about the final stage, it's very enormous. And so, one million yen in the initial cost, but eventually it will be actually 200 million yen. So, it is not logical, it is not reasonable. And also, the consensus formulation is extremely difficult. A consensus formulation means that and it is also costly. Therefore, for the time being, what is available and what is available should be used. 
Uh, so the reoperation is uh, now being considered, but uh, I believe that we should actually leave and eliminate the nuclear power station as soon as possible. So as a global trend, the renewable energies should be promoted advanced is advanced further. That is a major trend. And uh, actually that the uh, nuclear power is an uh, Nuclear weapon and owned countries do have other perspectives in Europe and France and so UK have got another and those and nuclear weapon, but the other companies are actually eliminating the nuclear power station these days. It is a very complicated matter, complicated issue in modern world. So time is getting on. So we would like to move on to the final question. So that is a question to Tokyo University. University of Tokyo. At the, does the University of Tokyo, does the country have a plan for renewable energy procurement? If yes, will it also be funded internally like TFCP or through external investment? Also, uh, that is a question. Also, will the university prepare a sustainability fund uh, similar to Oxford? And that is a question. Well, we are started the, uh, considering that uh, internally in University of Tokyo, we haven't still not doing that yet, but we will announce it once we decided. So that is the only thing we can say at this point of time. We don't, we are currently considering such a plan. So, so that is the uh, University of Tokyo is currently considering on this, and that is the action that will be uh, made for the University of Tokyo. In a power cons because we do spend a lot of power consumption in our R and D activities, so in at the University of Tokyo, huge amount. So how we should uh, do that, and do we have started, however, to consider those uh, things that you have just mentioned, that, like being questioned. Now uh, we'll be almost uh, becoming at six p.m. Thank you very much uh, for the all the questions, and also thank you very much for the panelists, the speakers as well, and with this. We would like to appreciate uh, the decarbonization effort by the universities to as a trigger uh, to start with the race zero and to work with the various different universities. And, the, and that is the, what we'll be working on Japan as well. And various uh, initiatives are being worked on. And the, through this kind of forum, we can share the information. And that is also very important. So, so through this discussion, we like to uh, move uh, contact. Uh, please uh, feel free to contact and also link with other universities or other organizations so that we can work together for this effort in JCI and EUCA uh, that we are supporting those your activities. So, if there's anything, that please feel free to contact us. And thank you very much. Uh, and also speakers, uh, thank you very much. And with that, uh, we'd like to conclude today's event. Thank you. And also, we'd like to keep importance of, of our connections together so that we can work on this uh, for the future. Thank you. That adjourns uh, this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.